one thing about the Empire. It was all about the biscuits. Greetings and welcome once again to Roman of the Empire. I am your host, Roman. Today we are talking about The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 3, The Convert. This was an uneven episode for me. I think a lot of people will probably enjoy it. I also think that the pacing midsection is going to throw some folks off. I am one of those folks. So, um... We get some good starfighting action, uh, good ship stuff, which is cool. We like to see that. Um, but man, there was a clunker in the middle that meanders for a long time. Visually, the episode looked, looked great. Uh, Pacing-wise, not so much. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time with Mando and Bo-Katan. This is mostly a, an, an other story. Uh, it's not an other story that doesn't have any any potential or use. I see what they want to do. I don't like how they did it. But, um, like I said, overall, it's kind of a clunker of an episode. The actual stuff could have taken a lot less time. And you're only with bo and Mando for, like, seven minutes, maybe, of the entire episode. Uh, but, yeah. I, I don't know what this means going forward. Um... Episode one sucked, as, I, as I've as i talked about. Episode two was, was good. Then there's this one, which was uneven as all hell. How do you keep your audience? Well, with this, don't know. Um, is this going to... This is certainly is going to bring more people to watch the show. I can, I can say that. I mean, um, I wish the writing were better. I know, I know John Favreau. We all love John Favreau. Uh, but I'm, this season has not been awesome that's you know kind of is what it is so let's let's dive into this talk about the good and bad aspects of it so your bookend here by bo and mando a bunch of sh- stuff in the middle and then mando and bo at the end but we'll just we'll get there so this picks up right after uh the last chapter the the minds of mandalore where mando dove into the water well walked into the water sank to the bottom bo had to fish him out, but on the way up they saw, she saw the uh, mythosaur, the, the giant beast that uh, is what united the clans at the beginning of Mandalore. So as soon as they get out of the water, so he's hacking up things, you know, as, as you do when you come out of water, apparently in every TV episode ever. And she's like, Siri, you bathed in the, in the waters, let's get out of here. And she's like, by the way, did you see anything alive down there? And he's like, no, I just saw the rocks as I was plummeting to the bottom. Um, so she's like, okay. And so she's keeping this to herself for now. Uh, I, I, and we suspect we know why, because she wants to use the mythosaur to come back to power. Makes sense. Makes sense. Now they're, they hop into her ship. They're on their way back um, to uh, Calavera. That's the moon she lives on. But as they're coming into the atmosphere, they get attacked by TIE Interceptors because bo has been raiding ex-Imperial ships for a long time, and she's, you know, not made a lot of friends. This is a good scene. This is a really fun scene. So bo uh Mando mans the rear gun. They actually, I mean, they run into their first batch of TIE Interceptors, and it's more than she thinks she can handle on her own, so... They fly over her castle on Calavera, and he does one of those hop out of the ships, turns on his Mando jetpack thing, and goes down and onto the landing platform, gets in his N1, and, and then engages. That was a fun scene to watch. I like getting to see the Mandalorians do Mandalorian stuff. Now, <laughs> my problem with the scene, and it's kind of it's minor, but it, it's, it's goofy writing, it's not very high stakes. Why is it not very high stakes, Roman? Mando was in his ship. Bo-Katan and uh, Grogu are in her ship. Nothing is going to happen to any of these people. It still looks really fun. Uh, She's flying through the cliffs, through the sea, uh, shooting the TIE interceptors out of the sky. He's engaging with the N1, and it's a good dogfight. Now, they they take care of this first batch, but then they see in in the distance this big smoke plume coming up 
and TIE bombers have destroyed her castle. Bo is pissed, and they're going off to engage, but then they see, you know, the dots on the screen have multiplied, and there's a whole fleet of TIE interceptors coming in, and it's this is now certainly more than they can handle. So uh, Mando's like, oh, let's uh, jet out of here, go to hyperspace, and we'll go somewhere safe. And she's like, all right, I'll go. That's it. That's it for Mando and Bo for the majority of the episode. Now, this middle part, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, <laughs> even though it was the majority of the episode. So we meet uh, Dr. Pershing. He's going, he's, you'll remember him from season two. He was the doctor with the glasses on Moff Gideon's ship, the clone doctor. He's the one who was trying to f clone force beings. Um, you know, kind of like the Dr. Mengele of the Empire. Now, he's giving, he's in the opera house that you'll remember from Revenge of the Sith, where, uh, the, 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 the tragedy of Darth Pelagius was whispered out by, um, Palpatine to Anakin. And he's giving a speech on, you know, how he had to work for the Empire and now he's with the new, um, New Republic, and, you know, while his work was, was evil, he, there were certain benefits that could be gained from it, as all scientists seem to have. Um, and his mother died of a heart defect, and if a certain, you know, easy cloning stuff had been available, her death would have been preventable. That's the gist of it. Then he gets pats on the back from all the, the people who are there. We're glad you're on our side now, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Um... But then he's on. Then he goes back. You you fly through Coruscant again, uh, which you know it's, it's Coruscant is a, is a really nice visual, and they do a good job with it. Um, and he's going back to his uh, his dorm is is I think a good word for it. This is where the Imperials who are in a reintegration program go to uh, as they're getting worked back into society, and he gets some other uh, uh, former Imperials bring him over. We recognize one from Darth, um, oh, I'm sorry, Moff Gideon's ship. She was the comm officer there, and you don't know her name yet. But they're all sitting there, and they're just kind of joking about things they miss about the Imperial days. And the, the rations keep coming up, you know, the, uh, the Imperial biscuits. It's a little bit silly, but whatever. So they chit-chat. We follow him through his day. He's in a cube. Um, almost like uh, Cyril Karn and Andor. It's a very similar administrative, you want to blow your brains out kind of environment. Uh, just death, death by slow bureaucracy. His job is to, his new job, the new doc, the doctor, Pershing's new job, is basically he's cataloging things from uh, decommissioned imperial assets that are set for destruction. That's a fun job. Um, and then he has to go sit with a robot counselor every day. You know, do you feel mad at any of your coworkers? Do you feel mad at the New Republic? Blah, 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 blah. And this just kind of cycles through. This is his day. Then someone leaves a tin of biscuits outside his door. That's very nice. Uh, he meets up, uh, with, um, un unnamed Imperial officer and they're walking around in Coruscant, just kind of enjoying the sights. She's saying how it's different, but the same. The, the old cog banners, that's the imperial symbol, are down. Okay, great. And she's talking to him about his work. Hmm, why would she be doing that? Uh, and she's just, you know, they're joking around. They're having a good time. And then, she's, then he's, she's like, you know, do you miss what you were doing? And he's like, yeah, I thought what I was doing actually had a lot of value. I think it could be a value to the New Republic, but I'm not allowed to work on it because cloning stuff is illegal. And she's like, well, you know, if you keep just obeying orders blindly, that's how we got here in the first place. So they have a long discussion, and then it leads to uh, an end of the evening. You know, if you want help, I can probably help get you whatever lab equipment you need. Um, but we'd have to go outside of our legal parameters. He freaks out a little about it. She's like, well, sleep on it. So... He does, then he goes back through his day, which is the same day that you want to blow your brains out with. 
and he's trying to tell his his boss, like, you know, we're getting rid of a lot of tech that would actually be useful to other people. And he's like, well, it was Imperial, so we got to destroy it. You know, the mindless, the mindlessness of this. So at the end of this day, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm done. And he goes and he visits unknown former Imperial officer uh, and says, yeah, let's do it. Now, th this is a semi-interesting scene, semi, and I'm going to explain the problems with it, though. So they, they're, they, they ditch their, I used to be an Imperial uniform, put on the civilian attire, make their way to what looks like a subway type train, What's that? except it's not a subway, it's just, a, let's call it their rail transit, to go, uh, they end up going to the shipyards. This trip is clunky because uh, they don't have tickets because they're not allowed to be there. And then they get in, uh, slowly pursued by a couple of not quite Terminator style droids on a train. There are a million ways that in an advanced techno and technologically advanced society, this all could have stopped, but of course you need the plot to move on so it doesn't. They jump off the train at the shipyards where the Imperial destroyer or Star Destroyers are being broken down. There's no guards. Why would there be guards? That's just silly. They're decommissioned. That's stupid. That's bad writing and it's, it's completely illogical. You don't just give access to anybody to a ship. Even if, it's, even if you have to flip a switch to, to get into the ship, that's dumb plot. So they're in the, the room he's talking about, you know, I always knew I wanted to be a cloner. Okay, weird, but whatever. They gather up a very small amount of gear. For what you think he wants to do, you'd think this would be more, but it's a really not very much stuff. It's like, okay, so your briefcase full of stuff is going to give you what you need to become a cloning guy again. Uh, it's, again, clunky. Well, they had no way to get it back anyway, though. They came illegally on a train. How are they getting back? These are all questions. So as they're exiting the facility, uh, they get stopped by, you know, New Republic guards. Turns out, uh-oh, um, her name is Aliyah Kane. And she's now working for the New Republic. And she just dimed him out. This was all a sting operation. Because, you know, evil cloning doctor might want to evil clone again. Even though he totally baited him into it. And he was going along fine in his, 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 you know, his new place in society. He wasn't thrilled, but a lot of workers are not. But she, you know, when he thought he was out, she pulled him back in. Sting operation. So now they're, they've got him in a, in a New Republic medical facility where they're doing something, I, I would say, akin to electroshock therapy, but it's based on Imperial tech, huh, called a mind flare, which can wipe you out, basically. So it's the, the, the squid doctor is explaining, you know, it's a it's basically it, it helps to ease your mind, to calm your mind, just like electroshock therapy. And I've done it myself, and it was I found it very refreshing. Cool. So then, of course, he's hooked up to the machine. Uh, your former Imperial officer, who's now a, you know a new Alliance spy, essentially, is in the room with some other dude, and he's he's the one who actually is running the controls. He's got the the dude's got the electrodes going through his head, and he's got it up on like a level two. It's nice blue stream. Ah, oh. and then. He's, he's leaving the room for reasons I can't comprehend because why would you leave someone in the middle of a procedure saying, hey, you coming with me? And she's like, no, he, he, he failed, but he was a friend. Okay. So she stays in the room while the other guy goes. She cranks it up to 11 and zzz, big red stream going through his noggin. Now, you assume her motivations here are probably related to Moff Gideon. Somehow by zapping this dude's brain, she's trying to kick him back into Imperial mode. That's my guess. Don't know it wasn't very well explained. And we leave it with that. And she's munching on an Imperial biscuit as the scene fades. Long time getting there. Now we're finally back with Mando and bo as they arrive on that un, you know, unnamed planet that the Mandalorians have set up camp on. Um, they get welcomed by, uh, what's his name? The douche. Oh, Paz Vizsla, the big dude. And he's like, what are you doing back? You're an apostate. And man is like, look, I man, I bathe in the waters of Mandalore. I'm cool now. And bo confirms this, but he's like, how do I know? How do I know? So they go in, they meet the armor, they test the waters, which do actually have a peculiar quality. He took a little vial with the money left. And now he's back in the clan. And bo because she hasn't pulled her helmet off right now, um... 
kind of by accident, is back in the traditional Mandalorian clan as well. She doesn't mention the mythosaur, but you do see she looks at the skull on the wall at the end of the episode that was from, you know, that's what the Mandalorian symbol is, and that's what she is attempting to reunite with. That's the episode. Like I said, kind of clunky. Um, but not, not bad. The beginning and the end were good. The middle, I get what they were trying to do, but it was handled roughly. Pacing issues. I, I had pacing issues with Andor. This is not dissimilar. So there you go. Um, where is it going from here? I don't know. I hope they don't do slow plots in the middle bookending things again. That's just tough. Uh, but I liked the beginning and the end a lot. And I, the, the, like I said, the idea of what they want to do is cool. Getting to Moff Gideon, probably. Of course, now we're, we're easing into the, um, the sequel territory, which I didn't like. If we end up there, we end up there, but I don't dig it. That's it for now. This has been Roman of the Empire signing off. Please make some comments. I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. Uh, and like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, because we really need it. Be kind.